Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD with my full review of Apple's fifth generation iPod Touch, which has been updated in pretty much every way, shape, and form. Gone is the mirror-like back, which attracted fingerprints like nobody's business, and in is an improved aluminum back that comes in six colors, slate, silver, pink, yellow, blue, and product red, which is only available through Apple. Out of the box, it comes paired with Apple's new EarPods, which are a huge improvement over Apple's previous sorry excuse for a pair of in-ear headphones. They're not going to replace high-end headphones, but they definitely sound great for coming stock with a device. You also get the now infamous loop, which attaches to the bottom of the iPod Touch and essentially acts as a lanyard that goes around your wrist and prevents you from dropping the iPod. As silly as it sounds, the loop actually works pretty solid, and the fact of the matter is kids are going to get a hold of this, and you don't want to have to strangle little Jimmy because he dropped his shiny new birthday present. In addition to the new colors, we also see a larger 4-inch retina display that features the same 1136 by 640 resolution that we saw on the iPhone 5, and from what I can tell, they are nearly identical in terms of display quality. When I have the 4th and 5th generation iPod touch side by side, there is definitely a noticeable difference. The 5th gen is much sharper, more vibrant, and kind of leaves the 4th gen looking a little washed out. Now again, like the iPhone 5, gone is the 30-pin connector on the new iPod touch, and that is replaced by the new lightning port. It's definitely a pain in the ass needing to buy adapters for your old accessories to work, but the new iPod Touch also does feature Bluetooth 4.0, which works great with newer Bluetooth speakers and allows you to cut the cord completely. To the left of the lightning port, we have the headphone jack, and to the right, we have the built-in speaker, which isn't going to replace your boombox, but it definitely does the job. Moving along up the device towards the top left-hand side, we have the volume rockers, but unlike the iPhone 5, the silent profile switch is missing, so to mute the device, you actually have to manually turn the device all the way down, which is slightly annoying, but not a deal breaker by any means. On the inside, in terms of internals, the new iPod Touch is rocking a faster A5 chip with double the RAM of the previous 4th gen iPod Touch. Benchmark performance was nearly double the previous generation and the faster processor, combined with the bigger 4-inch display, makes for a really enjoyable gaming experience. Here you guys can take a look at Asphalt 7, which is fully optimized for the bigger 4-inch display. Watch it! Go Homer, it's your birthday, huh? Jumping back to the back, I guess that made sense. That little black strip right there isn't there to annoy you. It is actually for Wi-Fi. Yes, it might be ugly, but it actually does increase the performance when compared to the fourth gen iPod Touch. Performance was actually nearly double as far as download speeds go. Moving to the left, we have the LED flash, which was missing from prior iPod Touch models. And then next to that, we have the microphone. And even though it's located on the back through testing it out with Siri, I didn't have to yell at her and she still understood me. Now, in addition to the bigger screen and faster processor, the other huge improvement to the new iPod Touch are the cameras. The rear-facing camera now shoots full 1080p and most noticeably features a 5 megapixel camera that looks night and day better than the 4th gen. Even though the 4th gen shot in 720p, in terms of still pictures, it was VGA quality, which in today's standards is about equivalent to a potato. The front-facing camera is also drastically improved and now shoots in 720p. So here is a quick clip of that. You can see blah, 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 blah. I'm talking. Looks pretty decent. Let's flip over to the 1080p rear camera so you guys could take a look at my dogs. This is Melody. This is Big Mac. And you can see it definitely does look good. So that pretty much wraps it up. Now, in terms of Apple releases this year, there are people disappointed with the new iPad with the iPhone 5. That it really didn't kind of live up to the hype, but I think Apple did it right with the new iPod Touches, and there's not really a whole lot to complain about. It's thinner, it's faster, it's lighter, it's built a whole lot better. The display looks 10 times better than the previous model, so for those reasons alone, if you're curious about upgrading, or maybe you hadn't bought an iPod Touch, now is definitely a great time to pick one up. There were a few quirks in terms of the volume rockers, like I talked about not having that silent profile switch, and I definitely would have liked to see the camera lens not sit out so high, just in fear of scratching it or something. So if that does concern you, I would definitely throw a case on this. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you guys missed any of my coverage on the iPod Touch, whether that's the unboxing, camera comparisons, or even the in-depth loop test where I put it through hell, make sure to check those out. That is annotated right here. If you guys are interested in picking one of these up, I will have pricing, availability, and the colors linked down below. Aside from that, I will see you guys later.